In this video, we're going to look at one of the most common math errors one that I see students make almost every day, and it concerns squaring negative numbers. So if I give a student, for example, the number minus 4 and ask them to square it, a lot of the time they will do this, they will write down minus 4 and square it like that. And intuitively that seems kind of right, because you take the number, you put a little 2 on it, and that means the number squared. And proceeding from there, they'll say, OK, well, 4 squared is 16, so the answer has to be minus 16. But that, of course, is not correct, because when you square anything, you multiply the thing, the number, the algebraic term, whatever it is, to itself. That's what squaring really means. So if, for example, we write 5 squared equals 25, so we might just know that 5 squared is 25, but that's because in our brain we've already processed what 5 squared means, which is 5 times 5. So we've got like an intermediate line of work in here where the thing is being multiplied to itself. So taking that logic to the number minus 4, if we take minus 4 and want to square it, then that should be the number, the, sorry, the operation minus 4 times minus 4. But when we do minus 4 times minus 4, those are two negative numbers. In other words, a double negative, which makes a positive. So that's going to come out to be positive 16. So be really, really careful with that. Students, students make that mistake all of the time. Or another thing that they will commonly do is to write down minus 4 squared, but still present the final answer as positive 16, because they might remember that when you square a negative, you get a positive. But this is unlikely to get the marks either, because this is still, well, these two things are not equal. The answer to this should be minus 16, but the question was to square minus 4, which should be minus 4 all squared, and it should be written like this should be minus 4, and a bracket squared equals 16. So if you ever get a number, a negative number, and you've been asked to square it, it needs to go in a bracket, or you need to write the number down twice, or even both. So if you were asked to square, for example, minus 5, then you should write it as minus 5 in a bracket squared. You can then go straight to the answer 25, or you could put in an intermediate line of working, which would be minus 5 times minus 5, that's then a double negative, so the answer is going to be 25. But just remember that anytime you're squaring a negative, it should always come out to be a positive solution. There's very few scenarios where you're going to be processing something like this. It's usually going to be the negative number all squared, which will then turn into a positive. So, just to highlight this point of when you square something, you multiply it to yourself, let's look at another slightly different but related um, error that students make. If you've got something like 3a all squared, a lot of students will write down the answer as 3a squared. They see the a, they see the thing being squared, and they think, well, an a squared is a squared. They forget, though, that 3a all squared, again, it's just really shorthand, like writing the squared is a shorthand for multiply that 3a to itself. So this really means 3a being multiplied to 3a. But in that scenario, we need to multiply the numbers together to get a 9, and then the a squared. Okay, so it's not a bad idea whenever you see anything squared, a number, a bracket, an algebraic term, to write the thing down twice, multiply together, because that is what it actually means. Another really common scenario in which you see the issue with a negative being squared is when dealing with quadratic equations and using the discriminant. So if you're not familiar with quadratic equations, don't worry too much about this. This is just an example of well, well, one of the most common places that I see students uh, failing with the, the negative being squared. So in quadratic equations, we've got this quantity called the discriminant. And it relates to the numbers, the coefficients of the x squared x uh, term, and then the number term. So in this scenario, the a value would be 1, and the b value would be negative 2, and the c value would be 3. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, you've never seen these, then don't worry about it. This is just a specific um, example. Um, but you can still follow along to see where the error comes in. So we need to work out this quantity here using our a, b, and c values. So we write down b squared minus 4ac. And quadratic equations are super common in like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, pre-calculus, even into calculus. Um, so discriminant is all over the place. So quite often in the discriminant, the b term, which is the, the coefficient of the x term, will be a negative, and the formula has got that b term being squared. So students will go, okay, it's minus 2 squared, like that, 
and then minus 4 times the a value, which is 1, and then the c value, which is 3. Minus 4 squared is going to be, uh, sorry, minus 2 squared is going to be minus 4. And then 4 times 1 is 4, times 3 is 12, minus 12, and then they get minus 16. Of course, that's not correct, because this here should have been in a bracket. What we should have done was make this minus 2 all squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. So minus 2 all squared then is positive 4, not negative 4. This comes out to still be minus 12, giving us a correct final answer of minus 8. So that's just one instance in which to watch out for squaring negative numbers. So I think the best takeaway maybe from this is, first of all, to know that a negative number always squares to a positive. But secondly, just to keep in mind that when you square anything, you're multiplying the thing to itself. And that's where the double negative leading to that positive final answer uh, actually comes from. So uh, just be careful with that and I hope that is helpful.